Shabbat Shalom. This week's Torah portion is Tazriya Mitzorah, and it includes all the laws of purification as a result of childbirth and particularly as a result of leprosy. Now, biblical leprosy is a punishment in a way, and it's uh, our sages, uh, our traditions are that, that uh, leprosy, in, as referred to in this case in the Bible, is usually as a punishment for someone who has either slandered another person, spoke ill of another person, or perhaps uh, been envious or, or arrogant, and uh, his comments about another person come from that, that uh, problem in his character. Uh, actually, the source for this is Miriam, because when she talks ill of her brother Moses, she is uh, suddenly attacked with with this leprosy um, and if you remember that this is told to us in the book of Numbers she has to then uh, the whole camp of, of Israel waits for a week while she goes through the purification process uh, what we have in this chapter in, in these chapters here in Leviticus uh, are the details of what happens when a person has leprosy what the priest has to do uh, and there's a particular uh, number of verses here that uh, struck me, and I, I just wanted to focus on them. Uh, Leviticus chapter 14, and again this is telling uh, the procedure of what one does, uh, the purification process of uh, uh, after uh, this leprosy. And it begins with a, a sort of uh, sacrifices, the, the specific list of sacrifices that this pers person needs to bring, and this is in verse 12, the priest shall take one he lamb, uh, you know what, I will start past before that, verse 10, and on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth measures of fine flour for a meal offering mingled with oil, and one log of oil. Here we have the requirement that someone take three lambs, this is, this is very, this is a big sacrifice, this is a, requires a lot of financial burden on the part of this person. And so we find later on in verse 21 the following, and if he be poor and his means do not suffice, then he shall take one lamb for a guilt offering to be waived to make atonement for him and one tenth measure of uh, fine flour mingled with oil for a meal offering and a log of oil and two turtle doves or two young pigeons, such as his means permit. One shall be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering. Here, therefore, we have a very special dispensation. If somebody is poor, if someone is not able to bring three lambs, they can bring one lamb and then either two turtle doves or two pigeons, which of course is a much cheaper kind of animal uh, and much easier to bring. Now, uh, you could say that if already they are making a dispensation for a person who is poor, why not just make the standard lower? Why not from the beginning establish a sacrifice that is something that everybody can attain? Just say everybody bring one lamb and, and uh, two turtle doves. Why do we have to start out with a standard that admittedly, even according to scripture, only people of more means are able to accomplish? And I think that there's, a, there's a very important lesson here. Because what the Bible is actually telling us is that the nature of this offering requires a sacrifice. It requires a, a major contribution. It requires three large animals. And um, if we had everybody at the same level, if we brought everyone down to the minimum level, what we would actually be doing is allowing the wealthier pe person to get off scot-free. Because it's no big deal for a wealthy person to bring one lamb and some turtle doves. So we wouldn't even feel it as a sacrifice. What, what the Bible, I think, is saying, there's no question, and, and the Bible recognizes, this is not a communist society. Society is full of people with many different levels of economic uh, abilities. But everybody needs to do the very best they can. And in fact, these words, if he be poor, are actually repeated uh, a few times in the scripture, and um, it, towards the end, just, just uh, in verse 30, it says, And he shall offer one of the turtle doves, 
or of the young pigeons, such as his means permit, even such as his means permit. In other words, this idea of his, as his means permit is repeated twice in one verse. And again, in verse 32, this is the Torah of he who, in whom the, is the plague of leprosy, whose means do not permit much for his cleansing. It's very, very clear, therefore, that scripture is demanding of the individual to evaluate his means. And you need to aspire to bring the sacrifice that is within your means, not below your means. If you are able to bring the maximum, you do. And only if your means do not permit, do you bring the lower level. And, uh, and I think this is an important lesson for all of us. If we're, if we're going to, to give support to charity, to whatever cause, as we're going to, to contribute, and in any way we can, we are demanded to bring the best we can. If we look at our neighbor, and our neighbor gives $10, and $10 is a lot for his neighbor, but if for me $10 is pennies, it's not good enough. I have to give the most I can. I read a commentary, though, that, that, that points out something else here connecting between this idea of, of uh, as his means permit, if he is poor, and the, the emphasis and the repetition of those words in this section, and the actual sin for which he has received leprosy. And this commentary points out that, that uh, leprosy, as I said, is about uh, slandering someone, talking ill of someone. Very often it comes out of envy. It comes out of somebody who, is, who is, does not have uh, who struggles, who, who is poor, and he is envious of the person who is wealthier than him. It may also come from somebody who is arrogant, who, who thinks he's wonderful, he's great, uh, and, 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 and maybe it's even a wealthy person, somebody who is who's boasting to other people about what he is. And what these verses come to tell us is that, is that you are not supposed to be boasting about what you are or be envious of what you are not. Each person has to find where he is and be comfortable. If you have more means, then you need to be giving more. If you have less means, then you give to be giving less. You're treated equally in the scripture, and if anything, you are required now to evaluate where you really belong. If you are envious of the wealthy person, now and you're not wealthy, you have to now evaluate where you really belong and say, oh, I cannot bring that the extra few lambs, I have to bring the lesser uh, 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 sacrifice. And, and it's an, an important lesson because the, the, the offering itself is requiring the person to truly understand and evaluate where he is and be comfortable with that position, not to be envious and not to be arrogant. Shabbat Shalom from Samaria.